Ah, uh, I broke that. I shaved my scruff off. I had a the trim. I, I am. Um, go- I'm trying to go back to the uh, the Amish way of appearances. Uh, I mi- I miss the feel of a clean lip while still having a beard to grab. <laughs> I know that sounded weird. Anyway, on that note. Welcome to the Nerdentials Podcast, starring your hosts, Joe Tweedy, Matthew Johnson, Nick Thomas, and Lynn Dungeon. Welcome to Nerdentials, your weekly dose of the Nerdy Essentials covering film, TV, video games, and comic books. I'm your host, Joe Tweedy. And joining me today in the Nerd Cave, covering yet again more gaming coverage. I know, guys. Four episodes in a row. Can't be helped. This is that time of year for gaming. Anyway, joining me across the ether, nary only a mile down the road, as he has for the last few, is the Lynn Dudgeon. Hello! What's up? Delayed because of internet, but still here. It's incredible. It doesn't matter how close and proximity I am to you. Skype still sucks. Love you, Skype. Don't fail us tonight. I'd also like to introduce our third nerd for this episode. Oh, everyone, shit. everyone, can you all give a round of applause for the return of the <sighs> Nick Thomas? I'd say I'm going in dry, but that's why. A massive lie based on the size of that mug. Or 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 is that a pi- what do you call that? That isn't even a mug. That is uh that's a stein. I love that's it. Proper words, please. We're nerds here, it's okay. You're accepted. Call it what it is. A stein. Anyway, Nick, welcome back, dude. Well, thanks. How glad to be here. Let, let's have just a couple seconds of small talk before we kick off our expo convo about gaming. How has it been the last week or two? Oh, it's been pretty good. Um, yeah, nothing to complain. Um, camping, I heard. Died. Uh, going camping again, yes. Again, Fourth meaning you weekend. came from. Yeah, last last week I was gone camping with the family. and Or was it the week before? It was, it was somewhere in there. Time so, is all Time trouble. is so blurry in this world nowadays with pandemics and quarantines aside. It's just everything's blurry. Hey, I'm getting I, out there enjoying some the, sun. No, I, I you know what? Relative. <laughs> what, Lynn? <laughs> I hear time is all relative. I also hear there's something along the lines of E equals MC squared, but I'm not a scientist. Either way. We- we are quite literally bringing one of those big, gigantic coolers just for the fish we're going to catch up there, because I know we're going to slay them. So, not the cooler filled with jungle juice? Oh, did I oh, no. say that? <coughs> no. Kidding. Um, and I'm just sampling it to make sure the mix is right. Always sample the sauce before you cook with it. Nick, you know this. Smooth. So smooth. So, guys... Here we here we are yet again, uh, long time coming. Having at, at least having Nick back, this is a nice warm feeling here. Uh, and this week, you guys will notice the Lynn has gone mobile <laughs> with his Colin. He he works out of town during the week, and he left his nice new laptop at home or at the workplace but, rather. But but that's okay. He's got so much freedom for. For exercise. I mean, and, this is what he's used to. If you guys have watched us for any length of time, you know this is how Lynn used to roll, very mobily. Um, he's he's got room for in in recording yoga. <laughs> I imagine if he felt inclined to do so, he would be very ready to do so. Um, I mean, I Pilates and come on, let's be honest. Yeah, don't forget the Pilates. That's where it's at, really. And then you with the keto, Nick. I mean, you guys are combined forces. You're looking good, by the way. I know you trimmed out uh, the chops and everything and the beard a bit, and you're looking good. Thanks. 
I appreciate it. You're welcome. Now let's stop being mushy, and uh, I think our listeners who have gotten used to a lot of heavy news lately probably want to hear some. What do you think? Heavy news, Lynn? No, he's just in the dark. Whoa. <laughs> There's a little movement yep. there if you guys look closely. You know? No, it was just like <laughs> we couldn't see him, and then all of a sudden his face just appeared like, whoa. He's got. Oh, yeah. He's still there. There he is. We hear the sound. There's the shadows. Oh. He's coming out of the shadows, a lot like Batman. Woo! Come out of the closet, I'm curious. Guys, I uh, I got to tell our listeners. I know. I know. We promised some pop culture, TV, and movies soon, but we've all been real busy, and the only thing popping so hard right now that you could fry a kernel on it is gaming news. So. Guys, I think right now, without further ado, we need to throw the flag known as Gaming Bits. Guys, welcome to Gaming Bits. A quick reprieve, or recollection rather of what we've covered so far and what this episode is about. We are now in day two of IGN's Summer of Gaming expose. Rather, because E3 got canceled, and IGN being a corporation of gaming news, they got blessed, I like to say, as I did in the first episode about this, that they got all the frickin' hookups. They got the trailers, they got the developers, the interviews... And because everyone's quarantined, and because IGN is actually based out of California, they had the first major lockdown of stay-at-home orders, so they've been covering everything that we would have experienced in an E3 event online spread out over June and July. We got the Sony reveal last week. We cut, Me and Lynn covered the 24 first-party titles slash limited exclusivity, I'm doing air quotes, guys, uh, on various titles that we'll see on other platforms later uh, in the year or next year. But uh, we covered that, and we're continuing to cover the Expo releases of things. There was EA, there's PC stuff to cover still. We have two more Expo Days of IGN. We're going to kind of start compiling it over the next couple podcasts that we do for gaming. And as we're doing this, we also have July to look forward to because remember, guys, all you Sony fans and Xbox fans, Microsoft still has their first party reveal uh, happening in July next month, and IGN's going to cover that. And so as a byproduct of what we usually would do during E3, we're going to cover it too as we learn from, yes, praise be to IGN you bastards. Now, we we love them. It's awesome that there's a platform for this news to come out for us. And as podcasters and YouTubers, we're going to try to do our best to give you guys our thoughts and feelings on the stuff as it comes. So today, guys, sorry for the droll, the draw out of that. We are covering day two, and we're going to hit the list hard and quick. Because on uh, the Expo Day 2, it was a lot of uh, developer interviews and less on the number of game reveals, which, not a bad thing. Uh, It's what we would hope to see if we ever go back to E3 in the future after all this crap uh, in the the world is over. So, guys, I'm going to kick things off. Like the previous gaming episodes before, guys. If you've been tracking with us, we will go through it chronologically from what has been revealed. We'll talk about what it's about and what we think about it. And we'll keep moving on. And we'll spend more time on the bigger titles that are like, oh, this is kind of a big deal. Also, guys, so if you've been tracking with us, uh, something new we've been doing here at Nerdentials is we've been actually layering in what the industry calls the B-roll footage. And what's cool about that, and if you guys have never been inclined to watch us on YouTube before because it's just a bunch of ugly mugs talking for an hour, 
rest assured, we are spicing things up by adding in gameplay footage and trailers as we talk about them throughout our episodes. So for the last three episodes of gaming coverage, you'll see a crap load of beautifully added footage as we're talking about it. I just gotta say though, I have to slightly disagree with you. Because I am sexy as hell. They're, it's a privilege to see me. Oh Nick, I appreciate <clears throat> your personal opinion about yourself. <laughs> but also make no make no correction uh make no mistake. I'm not saying that I think we're actually ugly. It's just sort of a facetious facade type joke. To throw out there. But now we actually have advertising reason to tell people, hey, we know you've enjoyed the podcast for the last four years, hopefully, especially if you guys have been with us this t- all this time. And if you're new, we want to let the old and new listeners and hopefully followers know that we've got more dynamic visuals to look at as the conversation happens. So by no means are we ugly. I don't believe that. Thank you, Nick, for pointing that out, though. Just want everyone to know that I don't think that negatively about our appearances. It's more of a joke. Oh, I know. I'm just letting... So is mine for the most part. Oh, no, don't cry, dude. I'm just... I'm letting our (laughs) listeners know it's okay. I'm letting them know it's okay to go to Nerdentials... On YouTube, I'm letting them know to go to youtube.com forward slash c forward slash credentials. That's, that's all I'm doing here. So, guys, that being said, we are going to jump into our list of reveals during day two of the Summer of Gaming. So, here we go. Guys, the first reveal we got, and I do not have a history with this title, but off air, I found out Lynn does, and maybe Nick does too. We are getting a remake. The very first quick reveal for the day was that we're getting a remake of the stylized, cel-shaded action game known as 13. Roman numerals X-I-I-I. Oh, it was really good. Yeah, first off, real quick. What I know from research is that 13 is a first-person shooter game loosely based on the first five volumes of a 1984 Belgian graphic novel series of the same name. And I thought this would be fitting because we have our comic book uh, dude, Mr. Nicholas, who has a lot of knowledge on comic books in general. And then we also have Lynn, who played the first game and really enjoyed it. So I'm kind of going to take a moment and pass it off to you guys. How do you feel about them taking a 17 year old game and remaking it for next gen? How do you guys, and also how do you guys feel about the subject at hand in general? Can I throw Um, it over to Nick? Do you have some history with the graphic novels at all or no? It's okay if you don't. Um, if I could find my collection, I haven't unpacked it all. I actually have, (laughs) the whole series of 13. I'm almost never afraid to question your knowledge because I know almost always that there's some past experience you've had with most things, comic book, graphic novel related. It w- it was great. Um, there's a reason why they made a game out of it. Um, and it's actually its style and the way it's put together spawned other people to make stuff just like it. So, they're, they're the granddaddy of um, that whole mob-style comic uh, graphic novel. It was really well done. Um, did you the play artistry, the original game? I did. Okay. That's what I was curious about. Yeah. Well, I, when the game came out, I was like, whoa, I have the comics for that. So, of course, I played it. It, it was good. So, uh, no boasting here. I'm just the host of the show. I do not have the depth of knowledge that my counterparts do on certain things here. But I just want to point out a couple things that I just uh, read up on. This series got a satellite award for the most innovative story (coughs) design 
in interactive media as far as the game is concerned. Uh, it's developed uh, by Ubisoft, Play Magic, Ubisoft Paris, South End Interactive, and Zonic. So it's like a group effort back when it first came out. And literally up to this point, it is on every platform all the way back to the original Xbox and PS2, all the way up to current gen, if you have backwards compatibility. So to see this be remade for next gen is pretty awesome. I, w I just want to briefly toss it over to Lynn. What was your experience with the first game, Lynn? Because I know you told me you've played it. Yes, I have. I have indeed played it. And back when I dived into it, I, I loved it very much based on play style and... I don't know. I'm a sucker for the cell shaded comic book style games. I'm you're a huge uh, anime fan too, and yeah, so yeah. it speaks to you. Well, yeah. No. Go for it. I didn't, I didn't want to interrupt you. No, oh, I, no, I, no. I the original game they did something cool where like uh, during the game the 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 cinematic scenes would almost have like the whole uh, comic book strip layout mm -hmm. and they did it perfectly. And I, I loved it. So is it safe to say you guys are okay. in interested I, I, in checking out the remake? <laughs> I, I got to say when you whip out that sniper and you get that first headshot, the whole upper left hand corner where it, follows the bullet through it it's awesome it like that comic book style type thing is just great you get the three where like the bullets coming close to the face bullet enters the face bullet exits the face and then there's the boom from the gun when you fire it it's it's fantastic so anyway um so yeah this one sounds pretty cool do you guys have anything else to say or Shall we move forward? Now, Lynn, do you think they'll keep the original loading screen? I hope so. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if it'll it'll sit there as long as it used to, though. On the I hope stuff. not. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny if it did. Like they did it on purpose. Like they yeah. force you to sit through thirty seconds of load screen, whether you like it or not. It's, it's it's a like, next it has, it next gen with a nostalgic it, loading. <laughs> it has it coded into the script that you have to sit there for thirty seconds. <laughs> hey, dude, that, that almost feels like they'd be touching on true nostalgia. Maybe not. I mean, they might not. Current gen players might not enjoy that, but all the people before them, you know, what I mean, just because it's going to be cell shaded doesn't mean they can't do it nicely. It will look hey. beautiful. Oh, yeah. All, all those kids out there that don't have to deal with commercials nowadays, they can suck it. They can sit through a 30-minute loading screen. I force, <laughs> I force my kids to watch the commercials. What are you talking about? You can't go to the movie <laughs> theater anymore without commercials. <laughs> Not during the movie, of course. Well, That's unheard of, but, but we don't what, know. What movie are you going to right now? <laughs> Our movie theater is open. Oh... They're not. Is they're it? not showing any new movies, but the movie theater here in town is going through their whole archive of all the old movies. So, like right now in theater, the original Jurassic Park is in there. Uh, you can go and watch Goonies in the theater at my my theater. So they have a whole bunch of old stuff pulled out of the archive, and it's freaking awesome. So two things about that. One, I think that is awesome because pulling back the curtain, guys. Nick comes from a really small town, so it's kind of a justified opportunity for them to do that. And yeah, yeah. And, the, and the reason the lack of new films are not there is because Hollywood's on lockdown too. So obviously productions are paused, delayed, yada yada. But that's really cool that your theaters are at least offering a, a cool experience with reliving some classic memories. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Like like the Kiggins from downtown Vancouver? Come on now. Yeah, no, totally. Every, every weekend it was two old movies. 
Yeah, yeah, I liked that theater too. I love theaters that play old stuff. It's cool. But like if are... I wasn't leaving for camping tomorrow, I'd be going watching Ghostbusters, the original, in theaters tomorrow. Nice. Uh, that would be cool just to sit in a theater and watch the old stuff, dude. Yeah. But we are need to move on since we are covering gaming this time. But you guys can see the itch we have to cover the other topics. And we will get back to that very soon. Promise. Not enough cow mine lotion in the world to cover that itch. No. Moving on, guys. Our next title, up for bid in this conversation, is a title called Foreclosed. Now, Ooh. it's an ominous title. It's one that doesn't have a past. It's a new IP. It is oh. developed by Antab Studio and published by Merge Games. The quick synopsis here says it's combining a stunning comic book aesthetic and a cyberpunk action within the stylistic framework of a graphic novel hey nice segue we just came from a graphic novel style game merge games and Antab studio are thrilled to deliver their stunning futuristic action shooter foreclosed the story is we're going to follow a story of evan kapnos his identity recently air quotes, foreclosed, stripped of his job, brain implants and access to the city, blockchain. He must now escape the city before his identity and implants are auctioned off. Now, while we're playing the trailer here in the background as we're talking about this, um, the thing I thought was cool about this is like, we've got um, teaser, cyberpunk seems to be the theme going on here this gen with uh, a lot of side projects coming out over the next, you know, year or so. And this one takes an interesting cross between that cell shaded uh, comic book style with a very post-apocalyptic cyberpunk feel. Um, I watched the developer interview with this one, aside from the trailer, um, and it's just kind of really cool about just kind of, it's not as in-depth as what, as some other things we're going to talk about dealing with this genre, but I liked just messing with implants, swapping them, uh, and just kind of playing a, in a graphic novel style. So we don't have to take a lot of time talking about this, but what did you guys think about the concept and, or if you guys saw the trailer, I think most, both, both of you guys watched it. What'd you guys think about this concept? Go ahead, Lynn. Okay, so I will say that this has a... I like the third-person style with the slightly... What is that? I don't want to say Deus Ex feel to it with the skill tree and stuff, but it looks... It looks really... I, I know there's no... Uh, combat that they did show in the trailer of the just rapid fire fuck, pistol kind of threw me off because you really didn't have to aim it just shot i'm kind of kind of wondering how well, it goes so i think i think there's I'll some see. augmented things related to that probably from, from what i saw on the extended gameplay portion of it so i don't think it's obviously i don't think it's a skill based Action game, I definitely think it's more story-driven. Oh, most definitely. Um, it it should be released in uh, second quarter, 2021. 20, yeah, so it's all, it is for sure a next-gen title. Uh, and, um, I don't, well, and it'll also be on Steam. So it'll also be uh, on PC for people that are Master Race. Oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, snap. A lot of things we're talking about today actually do have uh, Steam Early Access or PC-based options, obviously. Because um, this is kind of a, a variety uh, section when we're talking about games being revealed here. We did the Sony coverage uh, last episode. Every, guys that are listening to this right now. Um, and the Microsoft coverage will be in July. So, right now, I think IGN was covering a lot of third-party stuff, and some of it, I'd say maybe half of it, is coming on everything. 
Well, pr- I'd say a, th- a third of it is definitely PC. Huh? Coming on everything. I wasn't going to say it. Man, where are you guys at? Should, should we? Where's the Where's the level? Where's the level that these comments um, are coming from? Lynn's itching his lower lip slash chin. I'm about collarbone. Right Wait, what? What collar? It's right up under the neck. Collarbone, right there. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. I again, it's fine. We can speed through a few of these because there's not a lot to know about them. It's just more of a kind of an opinion of, eh, is it interesting or not? So, I guess, well, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing what Foreclosed offers on that cyberpunk level, but I have a really strange feeling that come this fall, I'm going to be overwhelmed by a different game of the same genre. Not in gameplay type or style, but, like, in theme. I feel like I'm going to be overwhelmed with some neo noir futuristic cybernetic thing uh, this fall. It's probably going to overwhelm a lot of my game time. Um, burying the lead. Moving on, guys. Our next title here <laughs> is called The Iron Oath. The Iron Oath. It's developed by Curious Panda Games and published by Humble Games. The Iron Oath is a turn based tactical RPG with a medieval fantasy setting. Lead, recruit, and lead, recruit, and manage a band of mercenaries who will age, retire, and die. Ooh, feels a little simmy. Fulfill contracts over decades and centuries. Oh, definitely simmy. And build your company's renown while navigating an ever-changing world. So, um, this one, we get that uh, medieval setting. I think this is one of a couple titles that we're going to be talking about that are definitely more on the leaning on the XCOM tactics base and leaning on the RTS base for sure. Um, one of the next ones we're about to talk, that we're going to talk about is heavy on the RTS. This one has a lot more on the RPG elements where you're actually controlling individual characters and actually building them up on a scale tree in a medieval setting. So that's pretty cool, but it's definitely got some sim, simmy levels. Um, and that's all I'll say. I'll, I'll say I'm curious about it. I don't know what all platforms it's coming on. It feels kind of like a PC title, but it could be on Xbox and PlayStation. And I just got to say real quick, guys, for uh, anybody out there that wants to create games and do stuff like this, um, Iron Oath originally came from Kickstarter. This was I, funded by Kickstarter. I yeah. remember it's back in 17, 2017. Yeah, no, that sounds right. Yeah. If you're, yeah, I remember reading some of that. I didn't put it in the notes, unfortunately, but thank you, Nick, for pointing that out. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of indie developers over the last year or two, actually, the last three years that have been starting with little to nothing and putting them up on things like Kickstarters you know, uh, fan funded sites. And so that's really cool. I I look forward to seeing how well this one does. I don't have any experience with anything they've done before. I think they're pretty indie and this is one of their possibly early things that I don't think they've done too much past. This is what I'm saying. You said RTS. I would like to uh, correct you. I'm sorry. Um, it's more of a tactical RPG when you think of games like, uh, XCOM or um, what's other games like it? Um, Side note, Nick. Yeah. Side note, you're not correcting me as much as you're just reemphasizing a part of it that I did mention. I said we will be covering a lot of titles that have some RTS elements, but this one is definitely more tactics based, where Ah, it's focused on individual characters with a grid. Um, No, yeah, no, no worries, dude. Totally. This one specifically, I rewatched, and you're controlling specific characters, and you're moving them across a grid, kind of a slight top-down isometric style, kind of Diablo two esque or Diablo three, where you're following them on a on a area with a grid. And it, this one it says turn based. Yeah, it specifies turn based, so it's very much like XCOM, Final Fantasy Tactics, 
Um, uh, Vandal Hearts, Ark the Lad, those type of games. Yep. I played a really good one on Game Pass that involved mutant uh, creatures. Shout out to oh, our yeah. game. Shout out to our Player Pass series on our channel. Check that out, guys. I that sample, was actually a really cool game. I sample a lot of things on that one. Um, so yeah, this one sounds intriguing and interesting, and I'll keep. I will probably keep an eye on it because I've started feeling more interested in tactical games, and they've they've put out quite a few unique ones over the last year or two. Um. Okay, this next title, uh, Lynn, you didn't have anything to add to this, did you? You just kind of... Ryan... No, you're good on this one. All right. You're all right, good yeah. on this one. Okay, okay. So, guys, our next title in the conversation is called Blankos Block Party. Ah. Now, it's published by Mythical Games Incorporated, developed by third kind games limited it's coming to windows and max oh wait this might be old news i don't know is it pc only is that true it's coming to pc in 2020 that's what the website says so it definitely looks like it's a pc based title now this game is interesting uh lynn what was the the cross comparison uh, that you were making about these characters, or oh, the game in general. Like the game in general looks like a mix of uh, Roblox meets Little Big Planet. Yeah, so it says on the website. I'm reading straight off the website at blankos.com uh, for partying up. It says, "Join your squad, jump into a dare, or go explore. Reserve a mythical account for the ultimate party invite. Uh, play for keeps." They uh, people asked I, I, in the interview. They asked because there's such a such a um, pop figure head feel to these characters. Peep, they a, they asked the developers, "Are there going to be physical collectibles, or is this going to be a digital only game?" They said, "No, we've definitely decided to stick with an all digital based collection." But this game does have that concept of collecting. So like you can customize these characters, make them extravagant. You can find new skins, if you will. Um, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong. This is going to be a free to play game. And they said, cause the big question with free to play games is how are you going to monetize? You know, the big question, like, okay, are, are, how are you going to rape your players of their money? Sorry. Not to be so vulgar, but uh, with all the customizability with characters and skins and images and the fact that you can build these levels, it's kind of like a party-based platformer where you can play other people's levels, you can build your own levels. It's very extensive in that way. Um, and when you said Roblox, Lynn, that definitely is like a direct mm -hmm. comparison to... The fact that it's a world, a community built game where people make their own games for other people to check out within the game. Um, but as far as monetizing, the only answer they said is that they're going to seasonalize the game in a way. So I'm thinking small package, quarterly, a battle pass, a battle pass system. Yeah. I'm, I'm reading here on the interview and, uh, Something caught my eye. I might have to try it. No, go ahead. Um, the, the creator, Jackson, says, We have a unicorn gun that fires rocket launcher ice cream. Oh, my Lanta. Yeah. It looks like it, it is definitely a lot like Roblox. Um, they make it very open source for the players to be able to create whatever tickles their fancy. Yeah, that's really Would cool. Would you agree? Dude. Lynn? Yes. It it very much seems that way. And that's how Little Big Planet was, was you everybody could create any kind of contact and or content and share it with everybody. Yeah. It almost feels like uh they're following suit with big uh names like Roblox and uh Minecraft where they want the the games to be the gamers to be just involved with creating as the, the actual makers of the game, which is a fantastic way to approach it. And it works well for a lot of other people. 
My orange kitten is making an appearance. His name is Thor. His name is Thor and he's freaking out. Ow. He disappeared. I know. Well, he did. Green screen. <laughs> anyway. So. You Boy wrestled goes, with him and you said ouch and he was gone off the screen. He, he, was sitting on, he was sitting on my shoulder the whole time. But the green screen was completely blocking him. <laughs> All right. Okay. Next game, guys. I guess. Well, that was, that's Blanco's for you. Uh, I'm. It's PC based, but I am very curious to see how well it does and if it can compete with other similar IPs that we mentioned here tonight. So, moving on, uh, a couple more here. Uh, let's see. This next one is way more on the RTS side. This might be a quick flyby here. It's developed and published by a group known as Firefly Studios. It's the next chai chai. It's the next chapter in Firefly Studios real-time strategy series Stronghold Warlords. Uh it's Firefly's first game to recreate the castle economies of the Far East. In Warlords, you take command of Mongol hordes, Imperial warriors, and Samurai clansmen as you lay siege to Japanese castles and fortified Chinese cities. Now, I don't have a reference point for other titles in the RTS franchises that cover other genres, um, but this definitely looks like a different flavor going more with the samurai side of things. I definitely, graphically, this is definitely going to be next gen. It looks cool because you can literally zoom in and zoom out on massive armies of soldiers. It looks, mm -hmm. it looks really cool. That's my hot take. I, I, I used to love RTSs um, from the 90s, early 2000s, and I'd be curious to see how fun this one ends up being. Do either of you guys have thoughts or opinions on this one? Can I hit it? Yeah. Please. Hit it. It, it, don't very, it. it very much feels like a Romance of the Three Kingdoms RTS. Okay. Meets like, uh, you know, like Dynasty Warriors RTS. Like, I feel like there there will be a general... I, I very much enjoyed the Romance of the Three Kingdoms series, and it feels like an RTS for that, or like a Dynasty Warriors RTS. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, uh, I don't know. I, I feel like there, like I said, there will be a general named Cal P in there somewhere. <laughs> and it's yeah. just kind of one of those, it's, it's one of those guys that's always in there. I no, can it, that. it very much um, reminds me of RTSs that I fell in love with as a kid. Um, actually, not even that. Um, I downloaded uh, Age of Empires 2 HD edition to play with my friends that are, live around here. And we play the shit out of it. Um, this is actually one of my favorite genres, RTSs. That's crazy. You guys don't know about me. No, I didn't, dude. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I loved them um, in my early, you know, teen, teenage, early childhood years. But that's yeah. cool, dude. And it's, uh, I just Empires, <sighs> Heroes of Might and Magic, freaking... Uh, Command and Conquer, uh, World of Warcraft, I grew up Starcraft. on the Command and Car Conquer series. Yeah, Con Command and Conquer series, dude. That was my dad's jam, which is the only, which is the main reason why we had all of them back in the mid late nineties. Halo Wars. That's more current, but it's still that's actually one of the more well put together RTSs for a console. Like I don't know if you've played it on Xbox, but like I both. it's surprisingly smooth on a console, and I think they really found the magic with that one. So I'm very curious to see if Stronghold Warlords comes to any of the consoles. I th I think they're going to. I can't remember. I didn't see that online, but I just straight um, up guys. I just this is me admitting that I need a modern day PC for gaming because there's some really cool. Guilty pleasure games I would love to play on PC. You heard it here first, guys. Your host, Joe, has admitted to wanting a PC for gaming. I know a guy that can build one. I know you do. I just, I just, right now, at the moment, I don't have the extra green. When you're ready. Even, I'll, I'll, even I'll for a cheap guy. one. But absolutely, I will take you up on that. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll take you up on it. 
Any final thoughts on this one before we get through the last couple? Um, what I'm seeing here so far, just to kind of limit it out here. Um, yes, to start out, this will be a PC exclusive. Oh, Stronghold Warlords is PC specific? Mm-hmm. That shit ends up on Gamer Pass Ultimate. Yeah, well, yeah, for the yeah. P- yeah, of course it does, dude. It's for PC. Ah. So, you know, I'll that's, yeah, mm-hmm. I know you will. You got a decent gaming laptop recently. Hashtag pull away the curtain. Hashtag truth. Guys, let's jump into our next title. It's a game by the name of Spellbreak. I am going to throw this one over to Nick. I know he's been reading up on it. Nick, what is our next title? Our next title for PlayStation 4 is going to be Spellbreak. This is one of those uh, Battle Royale games, and it is developed and published by Proletariat Inc. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Um, the synopsis on it reads, uh, Spellbreak is an epic fantasy action spellcasting game where players choose a class, weave spectacular spell combinations, and fight other players to become an all-powerful battle mage. Now, just a quick question. Is it a PlayStation exclusive, or do we know if this is coming out on other platforms? Uh, I'm sorry, you, you on, led with PS4, that's why I asked, sorry. It's out on PS4 already, but it is oh. coming to Xbox One, uh, Nintendo Switch, and computer. Oh, snap. Jeez, I can the, still play it now. Lynn, Sweet. light at the end of the tunnel there. Now, okay, go. On. what else... Uh, so that was the synopsis and that's who made it and and I watched the developer interview. This guy guys, if you guys are watching the footage right now in this recording here, the gameplay looks really cool. I'm not a huge air quotes battle royale fan. It's not a, something I'm interested in putting time into. Um Fortnite is the big one out there right now. Uh, Warzone is the new Call of Duty one coming out, or has been out. Uh, the other one that comes to mind is, uh, sorry, catching my breath, uh, Apex Legends. I actually did enjoy for a Battle Royale. I actually got into it a little bit. But this, but Lynn, Nick. This is fantasy based, not no. guns blazing. No, Nick, wait, wait. that's my that's wait, hey, hold on, wait, that's my wait, point. What realms royale? Realms royale. Oh my gosh! I forgot about realms. Bro. We might have to cut and that out so no one else copyrights that. I I'd, I'd be surprised if no one's used it yet, Lynn. You damn genius, realms royale. What the fudge, Nick? Did you just hear that? I've played <laughs> all the fucking. Watch your mouth, sir. Yeah, uh, I know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're fucking kidding. No, I know, dude. I've, I saw some uh, video of this, and I like the layout. It's it's everyone's doing cell shading, and I love it. Um, it actually gives this a different feel than all the other uh, battle royales. Uh, what Nick means is non photorealism in the sense that, yes, it's stylized. I cell shaded, I guess we'd have to go back to the 13 game we talked about where there's legit deep black lines outlining every character. That's like, but well, it that, is very, it's very similar. It's very that, similar in touching that one. I want to give it the comic book feel. Is why it's like that. Well, that's what I mean. Okay, example: Breath of the Wild, yeah. Legend of Zelda. Breath of the Wild is not photorealistic, but it leans on the cell shaded. Th- it's not the Wind Waker. The Wind Waker was hardcore <laughs> mother trucking yep. cell shaded, and yep. everyone and their mom that wasn't a fan preferred the le- the Ocarina of Time. And the other in in Breath of the Wild, which it kind of went back to. It's definitely got, yeah, I get it. We're semantics guys. Sorry, semantics about stylization of gaming. But this one is yeah, not photorealistic. It has a fable, fable esque, Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time esque, Breath of the Wild esque. 
it leans on the stylized feel of a world. But but what you guys were just leaning into that I'm super excited about for Spellbreak is the fact that it's a fantasy setting battle royale. This is so it's the same concept of a battle royale, but it's such a different setting. You're a freaking wizard, Harry. Oh my god. Dude, watching watching the trailer for this, just the sheer map mobility of, of being able to cast spells as movement is amazing. And it's not <laughs> it's not like it's just limited to blink. It's no. you can cast a fire tornado, use that to levitate yourself up and then float or glide across the map in uh, a certain distance. Hold my nerd card. Wingardium Lidiosa, ya mother chaka. Come on, we're really? levitating in here, guys. Really? Dude, when the dude threw wall up, and then he cast himself through the wall to pick up speed and move forward, and then pretty much blink behind the guy he was fighting. That was pretty awesome. I'm sorry. Get listeners and viewers, I did not mean to get as aggressive as I did, but I think a little bit of each of us have n- have never truly invested in the battle royale scene, but I think this new paint job, and I'm not judging you or no- and to be fair, we've never had a conversation outside of here, Lynn, but you eyeballing me, you sideballing me here, but I'm just saying. None of us have ever been proponents of, yeah, hardcore battle royale, we love it. But this setting, I think the developers here were like, hey, you know what? There's an audience out there we haven't reached out to that might want to try this out, and maybe they're not FPS players. Maybe they're not Call of duty ers. Maybe if we put a few little magical things into it, we might draw in uh, another audience, perhaps, that's untapped. And I really like that idea. Well, it, right now, um, in, game, in the gaming world, the games that are big are the fantasy genre. Um, there's other games, obviously, that are big, like GTA and stuff like that. But you look at it, uh, what's one of the most played games in the world, other than Fortnite? Wow. Uh, no, I mean, what's what's one of those game styles that is classically played in tournaments, and people win money off of it? No, like Both Dota. Are like, we talking about arena yeah. based? Yeah, League, Dota, League. stuff like this. Mm-hmm. They took that feel because everyone likes that whole fantasy feel and threw it on a battle arena and said, "Hey, we got both. Come like, on, tr- like, try this out. Try this out. We're different. Tell us what you think." And I think, I'm thinking and feeling, I'll probably try it out. And maybe I'll be a little more into it than I was before. We'll see. That's where I'm at. Lin, you, what's your final thought on Spellbreak? What do you think? It looks fantastic. And I am definitely going to get into some shenanigans and grief some motherfuckers in this game. Damn, Damn, I gotta sit through the whole edit just to bleep that out. Damn it. Kidding. Yeah, you will. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I uh, am gonna <laughs> grief hard. I I will grief until <laughs> you know the cows come home on this one. Lynn's this game the kind looks of, fun. Lynn's the kind of person in real life who's apologetic for everything, very considerate, and always tries to bless other people. Uh but when he's in a game he takes a really dark, twisted side to that reality of life. <laughs> I'll leave it I, at that. <laughs> I just like to watch the world burn. Because <laughs> you can't in real burn. life see it turn to games. That's fine, dude. As long as yeah. you maintain a healthy reality, enjoy your unreality. <laughs> Joking That's aside, guys. Like to get away from the world. Ah. All joking aside, I'm just giving you a hard time for the fun of it, for entertainment value. Yeah. But, but we need to tap at least one last topic here, um, and I think I think we went on a little too long on a couple of them. So, uh, guys, if you agree with me, if you're cool with this, I think we'll tap this one as the last one here. A, a little bit of 
ninja lax samurai convo um and any guys this is what i told lynn and our listeners before if we miss one or two we will wrap it up in a quick view in a following episode but i think right now is a really good really good topic to hit one last game and because it hits a, a nostalgic feel for a lot of people not just Lynn, maybe not just Nick, maybe not even just me, but just the amount of time this title has existed as a franchise and to now see it come to fruition with genuine authenticity in gameplay and make you feel like you're reliving the series it's based off of. Guys, I am talking about none other than Samurai Jack Battle Through Time. Oh, yeah, yeah. I hear some trailer play, yeah. some music in the background. Oh, snap. All right, we all just had a moment there. Sorry, guys. We're recollecting here. Uh, this title is developed and published by Salil. And here is a quick layout of what we are getting out of this game. It's voiced by the original... Lynn got excited about this. <laughs> The original and Nick voice actors, the original voice actors from the show, Samurai Jack Battle Through Time is an action platform game that spans across time and space where your actions will determine a new legend, an untold adventure that ties into the epic series finale. If any of you were there for it, team up with trusted allies from the show to face off against familiar enemies. Now, the 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 huge selling point behind this is the fact that the the people developing this wanted to make this game 20 years ago when the series premiered but they didn't feel that they had the tech and the graphical ability to pay justice to a cell shaded classic animated show such as Samurai Jack but lo and behold 20 years later this company came out and said we want to try to tackle it we think we could probably do it now and guys based on the trailer it was like watching you control the cartoon the freaking anime the freaking show itself now that's just me hyperbole blowing it up from someone who did not grow up with it but let me throw it over to the other guys who have probably experienced the show and i know for sure lynn has been there from back in the day. Guys, your thoughts. Nick, may I pass it off to Lynn first real quick? Please do. Lynn, your thoughts. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> the trailer the trailer for this alone, where they started off and then, you know, you're it's Jack running and then he meets a coup and then all of a sudden he gets teleported off into another Another time or dimension, I, I'd say time, but it it's just, oh man, it's reminiscent of the show, and I really hope, like they said in their commentary, that they're going to stick to going through all of the seasons of the show and then adding on to the end and putting a twist or the ability to change the outcome of what happened it would be great. Battle through time, dude. The series has like, been around for 20 years. So it is, that is such an easy, uh, concept to utilize for the idea of passing through time. And it, for anyone that's been through the series, like you do, you're going to see nothing but reference after reference going through these different time jumps. It, it's, going to be a nostalgia run through and i do not (laughs) hate that idea the the other one that i would enjoy if they did it would be in like an og nickelodeon avatar animated series nostalgia run through game that would be fantastic i i would i would pay top dollar i'd dump i would dump 120 bucks into like an avatar read like follow through game like if it went through all the seasons i'd pay for it and not the live action movie 
Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was great. It was great, guys. It was great. Joking aside, Nick, uh, do you have any past and connections with Samurai Jack? Yes. No, I'm asking you to lean in. Come on. Did you just ask that? Yeah, sure. It's I'm Dude, not a I. Sorry. This came Go. from the golden era of Cartoon Network, where we had Samurai Jack. We had. Dexter's Laboratory. Johnny freaking Bravo. Yeah, oh. I've seen this. Do the monkey. <laughs> oh, baby. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, freaking Powerpuff Girls. No, yeah, dude. Um, the last game I played that was a Samurai Jack game was early 2000 for PS2, if you remember correctly. Oh, yes. Um, But I am excited for this game. It looks like a lot of the cinematics, they pull... The same style from the cartoon, the actual series. Oh, yeah. And it's kind of cool. Uh, plus, um, they were able to make it still seem cartoony. But if you pay attention to the graphics on it, uh, you see the shadows, the, the shadow work, the water work, the, the movement of his robe is actually still new age tech. It, it looks good. Um, I think they're going to do it, uh, do it real good justice. Um, this is following on directly where we left off on the, the series finale. Um, and the the original creator for Samurai Jack, he had a big hand in this, this game. And he's super stoked about it. Um, just like the rest of us. Um, That's really cool, though. You know what I mean? Unfortunately for this game, the only thing I have uh, that I'm going to say unfortunately about this game it's a single player, and I can't enjoy it with the rest of you. No, but Nicholas, you can vicariously experience this game through our shared singular experiences. I just got yeah. just putting that out there, guys. If you're unfamiliar, Nick is a little more heavier on the multiplayer side of things when it comes to gaming experiences, so. Do not let that be a hindrance to you. Oh, it won't be a hindrance. I'm just saying that's the only downfall I can see. (laughs) But other than that, the game looks epic, and I'm going to play the shit out of it. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. You know what I would love to see? Mm. I would love Mm. to see Cartoon Network decide this game did so well that you know what? Let's do a Smash Brothers version of Cartoon Network characters. Ooh. Would that I'd not be sexy it. as hell? I'd play it. I think there'd be some. F- there's some fun to be had in that concept, sir. I I I would I would love it if they incorporated tsunami characters into it as well. Well, for a while there was tsunami characters in Cartoon Network. Now you're all just being crazy here. Come on. Okay, before things get uh... back to the jack. <laughs> back back. Before things get too long in the tooth, that'll be my studio statement in this recording. But, guys, I think that uh, there's only one or two random titles that maybe we we did not have time to cover at this point. We We are running slightly, if not quite a bit longer than usual, on our normal one hour movement. I think we'll be close, but it's definitely over an hour long this this time, guys. And that's because we have the connection, camaraderie, humor, and a little bit of drink drink to carry us through this news cycle of reveals, uh, even though the games are less in number from previous uh, episodes that only had me and Lynn. Again, thank you and cheers to you joining us, Nicholas, this particular time. Um, yeah. There's something I got to say, though, to our fans, um, yeah. people that watch this. Uh, just want to let you guys know we do this because we really enjoy it. It's time that we get to talk and unload and have fun with it. But we also do this for you. So if you guys think of any games and stuff that we missed that you would like us to talk about, please hit us with an um, email. Let us know. And if you need to send some. Um, some negative comments. Lynn will take all of those. Yep. Direct those my, my way. 
That's he's right. always Lynn, pay, to have, pay to have fun on, on his Twitter. Uh, he checks it only if there is negative feedback. So guys, by all means, <laughs> leave leave it there, and he will check and respond. But and what I was trying to get at is, please tell us what you want us to cover. We love doing this so much. Give us ideas. We're down for it. Guys, this is going to wrap up our Expo IGN Summer of Gaming Day 2 coverage on what has been revealed. Um, I would like to take a quick moment and just give you guys a little bit of housekeeping to end things. Guys, we're on podcast. We're in podcast form everywhere if you want to hear the audio. We're on Stitcher Radio, Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, Apple Music, everywhere. If you want to hear it on a road trip, if you want to see our faces and visualize the content, go to YouTube.com and look up Nerdentials. For everything else, including movie reviews, topics, conversations, and all the video content, everything mm-hmm. is found in one location, NerdentialsMedia.com. Dot com. Ah, it's so good to have you back, Nick. There it is. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Nick. Uh, guys, we are going to cover day three and day four and some additional content over the next couple weeks. So stay tuned for more gaming news. Don't worry, we'll, we'll have movie and TV streaming content very soon, if not mixed within those additional releases. So, for myself... Lynn and Nick. This has been your Nerdy Essentials, episode 191. <gasps> 191. Lynn, what does that mean? You're at 91. And? I'm fishing for something. We're one step closer to episode 100. <laughs> Heyo! Jokes aside, should have done that at the beginning. Sorry, but picking up the pieces. Guys, this has been your Nerdy Essentials. And, as always, we'll see you on on the other side. I'm actually supposed to be getting ready. I need to get going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have less than 30 minutes to hit the store and pick up the last few ingredients in it before the close. Oh, do that now. Okay, boom.